So you've launched your Amazon product. What can you do if you're getting zero sales or very slow sales? I cover that topic in this video. Hello everyone, it's Sajad again, Stealth Amazon FBA. So this is a common problem for new sellers. They may have launched the product and they're not making any sales. In this video, I'm gonna diagnose exactly the steps you need to take and what you can actually do about it. Now, before we discuss that, the first thing you need to do is you need to check your business reports. What you'll want to do is get the data from when you first launched your product to now so that you can actually see how many page views there's been for your product, how many actual products people have ordered and your unit session percentage, which is like your conversion rate for your listing. The other thing you'll need if you're using any other type of promotions, for example, PPC, is you'll need those reports as well. Again, data from the very first day you launch your product up until now. We need that data first to make informed decisions. The second aspect of this is you have to understand the customer journey. When somebody's browsing a product, so let's say your product right now that's making zero sales or very slow sales, how does somebody actually purchase the product? The first thing they will do is in that particular marketplace, they will search for a keyword related to your product. The next thing after searching for a keyword is they'll look through the listings and they will compare. Then if they see your listing, then they will click on the listing. So just think about what they need for that first aspect. They need to actually see your primary image and your title. And a lot of the time, all you'll see apart from that is the reviews and the price. Once they click on your listing, they'll see further information, the other images, your product features, the bullet points, maybe perhaps the description as well. So once they've actually on your listing and they've seen everything, that's when they make a purchasing decision. They'll either decide to, for example, add it to their basket or purchase it right now. So that's the journey. So what we need to do when we're trying to analyze why your product might not be making any sales is we need to reverse engineer that procedure. So the very first reason why your product might not be making any sales is poor visibility. Customers just have not seen your product. And a great way to check this is, again, check from time of launch up until now, how many page views or sessions has your particular listing had? If you launched it three weeks ago and only five people have seen the page, how are you expecting to make hundreds of sales? So that's your issue there. People are not even seeing your listing. And that might be an issue with a defective launch. You didn't launch your product properly. You didn't use enough sponsored ads, PPC or any other types of promotions to get it in front of eyeballs. And that's something you need to address immediately. In that particular scenario, your listing itself might be okay. It might be fine and it might convert fine. It's just people are not seeing it. The second reason, I would call this curbside appeal. So what do I mean by that? It's that your uh, particular listing is getting impressions. So when they search, it's somewhere there in the search. Your listing is there buried inside, let's say page one or page two or even further down. But people are not clicking on yours as compared to some of the other products. So in terms of curbside appeal, what can you do? Consider changing your primary image. Go and use the uh, Amazon product research software, for example, Helium 10 and Jungle Scout. I have discounted links to both below. Use that to see in your niche, what are the products that are doing the best? You can even actually use brand analytics for this. You can actually see for your particular keywords or niche, what are the products? Amazon will tell you this. What are the products that are getting clicked on the most? If you want me to show you how to do that in a separate video, just comment below and I'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial on that. The reason you want to check that is you want to copy what they're doing. Why is somebody clicking on that one more than some of the other listings? Consider changing your primary product image, the angle you're showing your product. Consider what other things people see in your listing at the beginning. For example, the title you could modify, the price. Are you doing any other types of deals? Promotions, vouchers, lightning deals. All of these things you can consider because then that will make your product stand out a little bit more on the sea of products in your niche. So that's the second tip, curbside appeal. And the third reason is price. One thing people forget when they're doing their profit margin calculations, especially beginners, you've got an idea of your target price. Let's say it's $25. But at the beginning, let's say everybody in your niche with similar products is selling for around $25. So that's your aim and that will give you a great profit margin. However, when you launch, you've not got any reviews, you're a brand new listing. You need to lower your price. And the reason for that is when a customer sees your product next to a product that has 100 reviews already for $25, they need something to convince them to purchase your product. So it makes more sense for you to sell it for $18. 
So even though you've got no reviews, only a handful of reviews, the customer's thinking, actually, hold on, I'm gonna try this one because it looks exactly the same, but it's a lot cheaper. And then what you can do when you've got the requisite number of reviews is you can increase your price back up to $25 in the future. The next reason is incentivization. Like, are you giving the customer some sort of incentive to purchase your product. And a great way to do that is to add scarcity or add some extra form of value. Everybody loves a good deal and that hasn't changed. That's more before than uh, <laughs> previously. For example, I was doing some analysis for a new product that I'm considering. And what I found in terms of the keyword uh, research, this is directly from Amazon. At the moment here in the UK, one of, one of the most uh, sought after keywords is garden furniture sale clearance literally with sale and clearance at the end of it. Why? Because everybody wants a deal right now. Money's tight. People are looking for clearance products. They don't really care what type of furniture there is in the garden as long as they get a good price for it. So what is my point? Well, for your particular listing, consider adding vouchers and adding other sorts of deals, promotions, a sale price on your product. You can do all of this if you want. Again, a step-by-step -step tutorial showing you how to do this. Just comment below and I'll do that for you. But what happens there is when they see your listing, and it's for uh, $18, but you've also added a voucher taking off another 10 or 20% from the price. They're more likely, again, to first click on your listing because they can see that voucher in the search page, and then they're more likely to convert on your listing because they think they're getting a really good deal. You can play with this by just increasing the price to $19 or $20 and adding a 20% voucher. You can do it that way around if you're very worried about profit margins. But remember, for your first flip, for your first launch, don't be too worried about the profit margins. You just wanna get the ball rolling and you wanna get ranking. So even if you do a little bit better than breaking even, you need to consider that and think a little bit more longer term. So what is the next thing you can look at, the next biggest reason why people make zero sales? Just before I discuss that, I put a lot of time and effort into this videos and I enjoy bringing this free information to you. So if you could help me out here on YouTube by just clicking on the like button, subscribing to my channel if you're new, and just comment below to let me know that you're appreciating these types of videos. I do try my best to put out as much free content and value there as possible, especially for entrepreneurs and in particular, Amazon sellers. So the next thing to watch out for, what can often happen is you've launched your product, you're making good sales, and then suddenly, boom, one day, the sales are down 50% is for you to investigate this. And one other reason is you may have recently received a negative review, an extremely negative review. One of those like well-worded ones where somebody's written an essay where they've clearly used the product and they've uh, um, kind of worked out all of the negative things about your particular product, not knowing that that might just have been one defective product. So you need to try and sort this out. And there's a few ways around it. Now, occasionally, back years ago, what you could do is you could somehow find a way of contacting that particular customer. Nowadays, I'll tell you not to worry about that too much, and also, you don't wanna get into any extra trouble. The best way to deal with a negative review for your product, because remember, this will happen. No product's perfect. Best way to deal with it is to drown out that bad review with lots and lots of positive reviews. Have a look at your email follow-up. Consider asking a friend or somebody to purchase your product and leave you a good review. If you've already made sales, that's pretty safe. As long as they search for the product themselves, they're not in your house with you whilst they're actually purchasing the product. Uh, as long as they're not you know, in contact with you in any way, like a close kind of Facebook contact or anything like that. The other way to do it is actually just request more reviews for your products. You can do this by clicking a button in your Amazon Seller Central account. So if you click on that, go through your last few weeks of orders and just click on request review, request review. And then that way, if you get a couple of positive ones, it will actually drown out the negative review. So that's a quick way that you can actually deal with this issue right now. The next one is poor conversion for your listing. So what can you actually do about that? Well, a related point, this is a mindset point now. Understand that being an entrepreneur requires action all of the time. Inaction and freezing up when things are not going your way is something you have to avoid. The problem when it comes to, for example, selling on Amazon or any new business is, let's say you launch one new product and it's not going particularly well. 90% of people just fail and give up right there even though they don't understand that if you make calculated risk benefit decisions over a long period of time, you will win compared to everybody else. That's not up for debate at all. So let's say you had, I don't know, a 50% chance of your product doing well. If you flip the coin enough times, you will eventually get a heads, even though you've got tails the first two times. So my point there is, if you're getting slow sales, don't just give up. This is your opportunity to learn. Think about everything you'll learn to try and get sales going for that product. You can use that knowledge and information 
for your next few product launches and it might actually help your next few products do 10 times better than they would otherwise would have if you didn't get this negative experience with one of your initial products. So poor conversion, what do I mean by that is you need to look at your keywords for your product. Are you actually ranking for a lot of them? Actually type in your main keywords for your niche and see where your listing comes up. Can you add that keyword uh, in your product features? Is it already there? Is it somewhere in your title already? Optimize for the keywords. Then optimize for the rest of your listing. For example, the images. Can you add better images? If you've had a positive review, why not copy and paste that positive review and make that one of your product images? Again, it might improve people actually purchasing your product. The next reason for slow sales or even zero sales for your particular product, if you've done everything else I've described, is then you have to actually consider whether it's a good product. Now, even before you consider that, what are the dynamics of your niche? It's quite possible when you were purchasing your product, it looked, everything looked really good, but by the time you've actually launched it, a lot of others have a very similar product, similar price point. And the problem with that is supply and demand dynamics. So let's say 100 people search for your product every day, or let's say actually 100 people purchase that particular product. Now, if there were five people offering that, when you first started researching the niche, so uh, let's say uh, sales are spread 20, 20, 20, five times. However, now there's 20 different listings offering the exact same product. Well, then you've reached a problem where there's a bit of saturation in that niche because demand hasn't really increased. It's still 100 orders per day. However, there's a lot more listings and that can happen, especially with new trending products. What you need to do next time is learn from it clear your products, try and sell them for break even or a little bit better as best you can, reduce the price, get ahead of everybody else, learn from it, and then with your next product, differentiate better, research the niche better. We've all had any successful Amazon sellers had bad products. I've had many really bad products. And if anybody's telling you different, then they're not telling you the truth. That's just a normal part of business and part of the process. Not every single product is gonna be a winner. Learn from it, move on. If you're unlucky enough to have a bad product, first stop, and you've done all of these different optimization tactics and nothing's really pushed sales, it's okay, clear the product because everything you've learned on that first launch, you can then use again. So don't waste that time. That time you've learned, those skills you've learned are very valuable. The next reason, and it's a related reason, it's again supply and demand dynamics, but it comes to seasonality. Now, one thing I've noticed, especially here in the UK, because I research regularly what people are searching for on the marketplace, and you'll be shocked week to week how things move. Sometimes there are certain items that are the 10th most searched thing on amazon.co.uk one week, and then the next week is the 100th most because trends change all the time, seasons change all the time, what people care about changes, and with all of these constant lockdowns, the trends are changing even faster. So just understand that there may be ebbs and flows to your product sales. They may pick up a lot randomly for a few weeks because of some change in government policy with regards to what people can do and can't do. Let's say we have a further lockdown. Well, everybody's gonna jump into fitness products again. Everybody's gonna buy resistance bands. Well, right now, people don't care as much because gyms are open but that does not mean you're gonna lose money on your product. It might just sell a little bit slower over a period of six months rather than the three months that you were expecting, but you still make profit on it, so just be patient. There are actually several other reasons as well, but what I'll do is I'll make a part two video if you guys are interested, and I'll discuss some of the other reasons as well because I don't want the video to be too long. And also our comprehensive training program is the second link in the description below if you're interested. We are running a promotion at the moment so you can use the coupon code, which is also below in the description to get an extra discount. So if you've got any questions about what I've discussed so far, please comment below and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening.